over. I'm not sure if the guys at King's Lock Chandlery took pity on me or saw the desperate look on my face. However, they sprung into action, built and installed my first source of heat. I chose a Morso Squirrel 1410. It's a multi-fuel stove which gives me the option to burn wood, briquettes and coal. It's one of the biggest sellers on the inland waterways at the moment and has had the same design for some 40 years. As my layout inside was reverse flow, with the bedroom at the bow and galley kitchen at the stern, I worked out the best spot for it, in front of my temporary tent bedroom no less. Latest safety standards means I require a double skin flue and unlike a house I needed a half. The guys custom made me one. You can't actually use the same rules that you use with um, household installations. So because the half is shorter than arguably it, it, it could be, you put an upstand around it so as if anything falls out the stove, it effectively just gets contained within the half. So there's no risk of burning carpets and so on. So it's, this is installed, installed to the British standards as opposed to heat ass, which is the house regulations. With the stove in place and marked out on the floor, I opted for a straight flue. A pilot hole was drilled through the roof and then out came the plasma cutter. We're right, out, Tag! The flue was lined with insulation and with a dirty great hole in the roof, there's no turning back. The stove was fitted onto the hearth and everything lined up. The flue fitting through the roof was sealed and I was on my way to having heat. Not bad for four hours work, well done guys. The stove has a grate that can be riddled, allowing the fire to remain lit for weeks if not months at a time. The ash falls into a tray that can be removed. To stop coal sitting on the small side ledges of the stove, I purchase what's called coal savers. They're basically two pieces of angled iron that sit either side of the grate, letting gravity move all the coal towards the centre. With the narrow boat being long and thin, I also purchased an eco fan to circulate the heat around the cabin. Through the magic of heat changes across two different semiconductors, electricity is produced, which in turn power a small fan. It's really quiet and runs purely from the stove's heat and it doesn't half push the heat around the cabin. A very good buy. In the next episode I battle Storm Doris down the Trenton Mersey Canal. I'm forced to stop for a few days and travel for over three quarters of an hour through a dark and damp Harecastle tunnel. Click subscribe now if you want to follow my journey. See you next time.